should I restart? Okay. Welcome back, explorers, to another episode of Virtual Mosey. Have you ever experienced a hurricane? Would you like to? Well, today, for our field trip Friday, you're in luck because we're gonna get a chance to see a taste of what a hurricane might feel like by stepping into our hurricane simulator tube. Now, before I hop in, let's talk a little bit about what a hurricane is and how they form. I want you to think about the biggest storm you have ever experienced. Was there thunder, lightning, wind, or rain? Well, multiply that storm by 10, 20, or maybe even 50 times, and you might get close to the power of a hurricane. Even though hurricanes are much more powerful than a regular storm, they form in much the same way. Water vapor, water heats up, evaporates, rises into the surface if, uh, from the surface if there's low pressure until it condenses and rains down. Now in the case of hurricanes, you might have noticed that they tend to happen in certain areas of our earth. Let's take a look here. Hurricanes are usually formed right around this middle band here. Do you know what that's called? The equator. Why do you think most hurricanes form along the equator? Well, if you said hot water and heat, you would be correct. The sun's rays are stronger at the equator, giving more heat to those vast areas of ocean where so much water vapor evaporates into the air to power our hurricanes. Until they can be storms 10 miles high, hundreds of miles across, and produce devastating damage if they make landfall. Now, despite that, hurricanes actually serve an important function on our Earth. They help distribute the sun's heat from the equator to the north and south of our hemispheres. They kind of are a temperature regulator for us. All right, let's take a look at our simulator. We have the main simulator here, and then something else I want to point out to you on the side. We have a special device here called a drop sund. Now, these devices can be ejected from planes flown by very brave pilots above the storm, and they have these sensors that allow them to collect all kinds of information and data, such as temperature, speed, direction, and that can give scientists enough information to help predict the path of the hurricane and help save lives. Now, I'm going to hop in. You can keep an eye on the wind speed meter, and I want you to think about what kind of a hurricane you think I'm experiencing in there. Is it a category one, a category two, a category three, or a category four? Category five hurricanes do exist. They are more rare, um, but to devastating effect. All right, let's take a look. And now we wait. explorers it got quite windy in there did you see how fast our hurricane um, got up to it got up to 78 miles per hour that's about 120 kilometers per hour if you're curious and what do you think was that a category one two three or four well believe it or not hurricanes like this one that are 78 miles per hour are only a category one that's the smallest type of hurricane there is and you can see how extremely powerful they are 
Imagine timing that hurricane by five, and you'll be able to understand the force of a storm like Hurricane Katrina or Hurricane Maria. All right, so we talked a little bit about what hurricanes are. We got a taste of them. What can we do to prepare for a hurricane? Well, a good thing you can do is one, have a plan. Two, have some supplies. And we're gonna go over a kit here that I have planned and prepared for. And if you'd like more information, you can search um, online or by Googling Hillsborough County disaster planning on your own. All right, so a couple major things we need for our hurricane kits are water. You should have enough for at least one gallon per person per day. If you have pets, you're gonna need a little more. And if you want extra water for cooking or bathing, you'll need to account for that as well. You should have at least a week's worth of water and food for every person. So in my kit, I have a little bit of food as well, just to represent what you might need. And again, make sure you have enough for every person for at least one week, preferably two. And these are items, food and water, that you might have to cycle out for freshness. So remember to keep your kits um, well stocked, but also check in on them occasionally. A few other important items I have are some propane for heat and cooking, along with my small camp stove here. Make sure to only use these outside. I also have one of my most important supplies is an emergency radio. Now you preferably need a radio that is certified by NOAA because what it's gonna do is automatically go off if there is a severe storm warning in your area. And if in the event that electricity or cell phones go down, you will be able to stay in the loop and stay informed. We also have some flashlights. This one in particular actually floats on water. And that's a good point, is that hurricanes are very, very windy. And usually we think about the wind factor in terms of destruction. But actually, 90% of fatalities that result from a hurricane come from storm surge, when the ocean water floods in and creates massive amounts of damage. So water is something you need to consider. And for that reason, I have all of my important documents in this waterproof container here such as phone numbers for people that live in and out of state, as well as supplies of medicine that you might need, up to two weeks of supply. I have some extra battery packs and chargers for my cell phone. I have a lot of first aid things as well. So gauze and medicine, things like that. As well as some matches, some sunscreen, batteries, and a few extra supplies. This isn't a complete kit, but it's a few of the most important. And you can see, again, the full guide by Googling hurricane kits, either for your area or the national recommendations. And it's a good thing to kind of stock up a little at a time and always be prepared. I know that in Florida, we have experienced hurricanes quite a bit, and it is important to always be prepared and always stay vigilant. So, thanks for exploring a little more about hurricanes with us today. Do we have any to share? Okay, thank you. So, a lot of people guessed correctly. They said Category 1 Good job. And several of our viewers have experienced our hurricane simulator before. And one question that we had is, what is the most dangerous part of a hurricane? Well, the most dangerous part of a hurricane, explorers, like I mentioned, is that storm surge. So not so much the wind that's causing the damage, but those massive influx of ocean water and river flooding in your area. Luckily in Florida, our mangroves help protect us a little bit by preventing erosion and controlling some of that storm surge. Do we have any other questions? All right, remember, as summer heats up, we are going to have more and more warm water evaporating, so hurricane season is upon us. Thank
Thanks for exploring with us today and always be prepared.